Hello everyone. In this video, we will take up the next group of meristems that is the secondary meristems. Secondary meristems which are also called as lateral meristems. Which are also called as lateral meristems. What do you mean by these secondary meristems or the lateral meristems? These are the meristems which usually are produced on the lateral sides. That is, if this is a plant body or this is a stem axis, then on the stem, these are present on the lateral sides. That is, on the peripheral sides or the lateral sides, the meristems are being present. And these are responsible for the increase in increase in width or girth of the plant increase in width or girth of the plant so when are these produced so these are usually produced in the late life of the plant these are not produced in the early phase of the plant life these are produced, these are produced in later phase, in later phase of the, of the plant life. Then since they are being produced in the later phase of the plant life, they are being called as the secondary meristems. We know that. The meristems which are being produced in the early, early phase of the plant life, they are called as the primary meristems. And the one which are formed in the early or the later phase of the plant life are called as the secondary meristems. And these secondary meristems, they are responsible for secondary growth of the plant. They are responsible for secondary growth of the plant. Now, what do you mean by the secondary growth? Secondary growth is again the same increase in the width or girth of the plant is called as a secondary growth. Increase in the height of a plant or length of a plant usually is being considered as a primary growth and increase in the width of a plant is being considered as the secondary growth. Then these are these secondary meristems or the lateral meristems they are not present in all the plants. They are present only in the plants which show Woody axis. Woody axis. What exactly is this woody axis? If you had observed a growing plant, in its growing ages, the, usually the plant will be green in color and quite tender as compared to the old age. So at that time when the plant is still green in color, we, con we consider that phase as a growing phase or the primary phase. So later on when the secondary growth will start when the secondary growth starts usually what happens is the width of the plant starts increasing if this is the stem now as in when the secondary growth begins these meristems which are present they start dividing radially the meristems will divide they divide radially so what do you mean by radially radial is if this is a meristem okay if this is a meristem then this meristem is dividing and it is not producing the cell on next to each other. It is producing the cell from the axis in this way. One cell here, one cell here, one cell here, one cell here, one cell and then one this. So the circumference is now increased. Here this is a meristem. Now the one which is getting divided or the newly formed cell, they are being formed in this way. They are found radially. They have been formed radially. So, what happens when they are formed radially? The girth or the width will start increasing. When the width will start increasing, now, this was the previous plant body. Now, after the increase, we have the increased width plant body. In between, we have xylem and phloem. In between, we have xylem and phloem. Now, the distance from where the, or from which the xylem has to transport the water, the phloem has to transport the food is being increased now. Previously, the food and water was moving only to this distance. Now, the distance is very 
large actually isn't it so so it has to move to a greater distances what happens is the food and the water which has to travel to this distance is usually not able to travel in the plants in the plants as in the width starts increasing the outer parts the which are these outer parts these outer parts are the one which are actually produced before or these are the first produced layers so these are being pushed this way as in the new cells are being formed here the older ones are pushed to the periphery so the older ones will be at the outer part once the plant grows into a proper age now what happens due to lack of the water and food which is not able to reach here to the greater distances this regions or these regions will start drying up once they dry up the green tissues will now develop or will now convert into brown color when they turn brown as well as these axis will become dry and in that case we call it as an woody axis as well as when we call it as woody axis it means that it has achieved the secondary growth what is secondary growth and what are these phenomena which i have explain just now i so that we will see it in the secondary growth classes so right now just remember that secondary meristems are also called as lateral meristems and they are produced in the later phase of the plant life hence they are called as secondary meristems if they were produced in the early phase then we would have called it as primary meristems since they are being produced in the later phase we are calling it as secondary meristems and they are responsible for the secondary growth of the plant which which actually means or which actually gives the woody axis to the plant body and then how exactly they divide they usually divide radially when they when they divide radially only then the width will increase in the plant these are not present in all the plants they are present only in the plants which will show the woody axis three best examples which can be taken for the secondary meristems are the first one is the fascicular vascular cambium fascicular vascular cambium so these fascicular based vascular cambium remember the, we are speaking about the meristem secondary meristems it means that they have the capacity of the division so where are these fascicular vascular cambium present or where are these meristematic cells present they are present in the in the vascular bundles they are present in the vascular bundles so again i am telling you these examples also will be studied in detail in the secondary growth classes okay next example next example is inter fascicular inter fascicular cambium inter fascicular cambium so these meristems or these cells are usually present between the vascular bundles between the vascular bundles and the last example is cork cambium cork cambium so these meristems will actually give rise to a cork layer it will give rise to a cork layer which is actually protective in nature which is protective in nature so these are the three secondary meristems which we will be studying in detail when we see the secondary growth fascicular vascular cambium interfascicular cambium cork cambium and remember this fascicular vascular cambium can also be called as the intra intrafascicular cambium this is intrafascicular cambium this is interfascicular cambium and this is cork cambium now let's just draw a diagram including all the meristems that is primary meristems as well as the secondary meristems primary meristems we have seen three types of primary meristems isn't it so 
this is a shoot tip eye. The first type of meristem, the first type of the meristem, it is the apical meristem. These are the apical meristems. And then next type of the meristem, it is the intercalary meristems. These are the intercalary meristems. And then the last type of the meristem, it is the lateral meristems or the secondary meristems. So they are usually present this way. This is how they are being present. Apical meristems, intercalary meristems and the lateral meristems. In the next video, we will take up the permanent tissues. So we have completed the meristematic tissues. Meristematic tissues, they are of two types. Primary meristems and the secondary meristems. Primary meristems, we have again apical meristems and the intercalary meristems. Under apical meristems, we have root apical meristems and the shoot apical meristems. And then the secondary meristems or which are also called as the lateral meristems. Under them we have these examples that is fascicular vascular cambia which is intrafascicular cambia. Then interfascicular cambia and the cord cambia. In the next video we will take up the permanent issues. Thank you.